biggest joy that I get from the case method is I don't know what's going to happen. You're filled with this wonderment when you're going into the classroom. I trust my students. I let go, which is sort of the most difficult thing to do as an instructor is to let go. And there is adrenaline flowing. Uh, one minute before the class starts, I'm so nervous. And a senior colleague once told me that the day that adrenaline stops flowing is the day you stop teaching. Because we are known for the case method, that's the brand of HPS, it attracts a set of students. It attracts a set of students who want to come in, experience the case method, and be transformed by it. And they quickly realize they are the creators of this knowledge, and there's so much self-discovery that's happening through this process. The same thing is true of the faculty. There's people that are willing to let go. They're willing to trust their students. They're willing to live with the uncertainty of the case method because you don't know what your students are going to say in the class, and that excitement fuels you. So that art of give and take uh, is extremely important. It develops your communication skills, your soft skills, where you get other people to think like you, but you also make decisions as a group. And a group that's cohesive always makes much better decisions than top down one person deciding what the answer is. So this art of what to concede and where to push back, I think makes you a better listener. And I think what happens through the case method is that they become lifelong learners, but they also have learned how to learn, which they are able to share with others. I think when we learn concepts in a context, we retain it longer. Uh, strangely, it's easier for the brain to remember more than less because each additional uh, piece of the context embellishes and adds emotion and pins that theory or thought into our mind that we are able to recall it. You're constantly learning, even as you're teaching. You, you might believe, like, I've heard it all. I taught the case 40 times, and the 41st time you learn something new because the world is changing. Your students are seeing this case in light of the current environment, even though the case might have been written 40 years ago. Students will walk up to me after class and give me a newspaper article and say, this company, they did the same thing or something very similar, and that goes into my file. So you can step back after you've written the case, written a teaching note to say, what is the theory of the case? What is the inductive theory that comes out of this case that generalizes? And what are the settings in which it generalizes? That maps very nicely into research. The case method is what keeps my research very relevant and grounded in the real world. And it's highly complementary. I take research ideas into the classroom, ideas from the classroom into my research papers. So there's such a very tight synergy between case writing and research for, for, for me as the producer of the cases. But the same thing happens to me vicariously when I read my colleagues' cases. So I think this has this positive externality on colleagues, uh, not only at HBS, but at other schools as well, where they can use this as one anecdote or incident and say, what can I generalize from here? So there is great synergy between case method, which is often used for teaching, but also as great synergies with research. So this is a terrific occasion to reflect on what's happened and make sure we leave this practice of the case method and this institution in as good a shape as we found it.